Right, now this week nutritionists, health professionals and others will try to hammer out some solutions to this country's ballooning weight problem. One of them, economist Jeff Simmons, argues that we need to put more regulations, even taxes, on unhealthy food. So is this nanny state or is it necessary? Jeff is with us now. Good morning, Jeff. Thanks morning, for coming Tim. along. Thanks. What are you sort of suggesting here? What sort of foods would you want to be taxed? Well, the, the problem is we eat too much sugar, fat and salt. And, you know, when you crunch the numbers, those sorts of foods are killing just as many people as smoking does. So, and, you know, we're starting to clog up our, our health system. So, you know, all those baby boomers out there who are thinking they're going to get hip and knee operations in 10 years' time, the hospitals are going to be filled with diabetics. Okay, so... So we need to treat it, like, as, as seriously as we treat smoking. So how do, how do you physically do it, though? I mean, there'll obviously be a, be a bit of opposition to this, and, and is it the same as smoking? I mean, food's a necessity. Is that a problem? Yeah, I mean, it, this is going to be much tougher to deal with than smoking, yeah, because we've got to eat, right? Yeah, so... But the, the same principles will apply, you know? We can, we can educate, we can, we can teach kids in schools how to, how to eat well. We can, you know, regulate the labels to show people what foods, you know, give people labels that they understand. I mean, no one understands the back of these labels at the moment. To show them what the impact's going to be on their health, then we can start talking about, you know, taxes and, and getting people to take more personal responsibility as well. So why do you think this would be better than, say, you know, you've got your, your fresh fruit and veg, why wouldn't it be better than dropping those prices? I mean, how do you get that balance there? Well, I think that's got to be part of the part of the deal as well. But this this could help pay for it. You know, we're, we're cash strapped at the moment, right? So if we if we start spending more, we need to tax a bit more as well. But on the on the GST dropping GST from fruit and veg thing, I mean, you know, for the same amount of money, we could give vouchers to every family with, you know, with a child, say five bucks a week per child mm -hmm. to spend on fruit and vegetables. You know, we have to. This has to be about the kids. We have to start giving them good hab habits to start with, rather than, you know, dropping GST on fruit and veg. Is there sort of any evidence that it'll, it'll stop people, though? I mean, buying those foods just because it's a, a higher price? I mean, if, if veggies and fruit are still high, then won't they just naturally gravitate towards that fatty food anyway? Well, there is evidence that prices do make a difference, but it's got to be part of a, a broader package, you know? Mm. It's back to the same thing we did with smoking. We started with educating. We started with getting the labels right. Uh, and we, and we uh, it, you know, got it into, right into the school system right from an early age, got good habits in place early. So the education needs to come hand in hand because obviously if, if people don't know which foods are bad and which aren't, it's going to be an issue to start with. Absolutely. But it, there's good evidence that shows that if people know that you know, certain foods are being taxed and they understand why, then they'll start to avoid them. And, and same goes for if certain foods are being subsidised, like fruit and vegetables, and they know why, they'll use them more. So what would you like to see happen now? What will be the plan of attack? What would you like to, you know, do you want, how do you get momentum behind this, I guess? Well, I think people need to understand, you know, the, the real tsunami of diabetes that's coming. Uh, the, the trouble is that it's 10 years away, and we need to start making the investment now. And, you know, no politician likes that sort of payback period, you know, they want something that pays back in three years. This is going to pay back in 10 years, but people need to know that the hospitals will be full in 10 years' time with diabetes patients, and we're not going to be able to get the health care we currently enjoy. So that once people understand that, I think they'll start to demand action. Yeah. Well, Jeff, thank you for joining us. It's certainly an issue that is a concern, and thanks for, for bringing it to us today. No problem.